Hello everyone, it's that college football guy here with another video really early in the morning. It's about, oh gee, about 5 o'clock in the morning here, Eastern Time. Um, want to post this video because I'm looking back at some of my older ones and some of the comments made. And I think it's time for me and my subscribers to uh, give me a little bit of help on this one. Um, HBCUs. I fully admit I do not know that much about them. So maybe it's time that I get educated by some of you. Now, look at this stupid housekeeping out the way. Everyone, please hit the thumbs up, like the videos, comment on the video. I want to hear everybody's reaction to this. Subscribe to the channel. Okay. Here's the pain point here. There are a couple of main points that are pretty much indisputable, whether you know anything about HBCUs or not. One, they are almost criminally underfunded. They have don't have enough money to get things that they need to get. Forget the athletic departments, the universities total. They just don't have enough money, and it's state funding. Most of these are state runs. I, I, this is one thing I do not know, and I need a comment, so down in the comment section, let me know those of you who are from HBCUs, are there any private HBCUs? Or are all of them getting state funding? Um, I, that I would like to know, because I honestly, I don't know. So I want to get educated on this. Um, that has been reported the fact that they are they are underfunded. That's not on there. In Tennessee states, it's the state, to the state of Tennessee, my state of Tennessee, re holding back land grant money, ridiculous amount of money. Now, one thing you should know about me, those of you who know me long enough on the channel, the fact I lived in Vegas for 40 years, four zero years before I moved to Tennessee. So a lot of watch, lots of, got to watch a lot of stuff go down there, including the state screwing up and allocating money for something that was supposed to have been there and then had to put a ballot issue on the, on the ballot asking for funding to pay for their screw up. Yeah, it happened a couple of occasions. Will that happen in Tennessee? Oh, by the way, we need a few more tax dollars in order to um, pay for the $300 million or whatever the amount was that Ten we owe Tennessee State. Maybe take some pay cuts. Maybe that'll help do it. That has been one of my ideas I proposed a long time ago. I never put it on a video. If a politician screws up and politicians screw up, politicians take pay cuts to help pay for the screw up. That happened? I don't think there'll be that many screw ups anymore. But that's just another thought for another day. Um, but I said that is indisputable. They have way underfooted. The video came out not too long ago um, about the students from Bethune Cookman saying the fact that they had moldy uniforms, moldy pads, moldy everything, mold in the uniform, mold in the locker room, everything, which I don't think. is going to be an isolated incident, something like that. It might, I don't know if Bethune Cookman's the only one who has that. Let me know down in the comments, but I have a bad feeling it might happen somewhere else in the HBCUs. But I'd like to know about that if you educate me on this, because I don't know. Um, listen, criminally underfunded. And there's also been cases where it has happened at a couple of universities where the school had to take funding from the athletic department for something else. Or because of underfunding, the athletic department's budget was cut. Um, because of, um, as to how the, the, the state or whoever did not give them that appropriate amount of money, that I don't know. That's a question I'm asking for the HBCU fans I got out there. Those who watch this video from HBCUs, let me know about this, because this is... I don't want to know, but I do want to know. You don't get educated unless you start asking questions. You can't be afraid to ask them. I don't know that much about HBCUs, but I'm hoping some of you will help me. Because this is bad. I mean, what happened, the players talked about, and I have a funny feeling, like I said, this isn't an isolated incident, and it's all due to underfunding. Now, I said in my previous video that somebody may have been caught embezzling, and some people said, I don't know any about HBCUs, or I've heard a couple people on truck stuff saying, no, that doesn't happen. It says, and I just asked the guy on there, no university president has ever done that. It says, can you guarantee me that? Can you guarantee me that somebody somewhere 
did not take some money from the athletic department for their own personal gain. This is the real world. Unfortunately, I'm willing to bet it's happened once, but I mean, it may have never been documented. Um, but I need an education from you on this. I need an education. Have you got any ideas? Let me know down in the comments. I would really like to know. But like I said, they're underpaid. Under, in some cases, understaffed. But that goes with what the big thing about this. Lack of money. You have to have the money to do all of this. So, and the one other thing I was thinking of, and I just lost it. Which, don't you hate it when that happens? You have a great idea and it just pops right out of your head. Is... Now, some people were asking, say, well, Coach, and it's, it's, this is the thing that's been gone out for, I don't know how long now. Coach Prime betrayed HBCUs. Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, was going to be an HCLU, HBCU for as long as he, he wanted to do one thing. Jackson State, I think, was a tool. He wants to give his boys the best chance to get to the NFL. And whatever university he's got to go to in order to make sure that happens, he's going to do it. I think, in my mind, that's what the story is here. Or, excuse me, correct myself, was here. He left Jackson State because a better opportunity for his boys came up. But the HBCU program is in good hands. But, like I said, I've been talking long enough about this. I need you guys, need everyone here, please. Let me know down in the comments what I mentioned about the fact of them being underpaid and possibilities of how they were underpaid. I mean, legislatures rerouting the money is most, I think, is probably one of the more likely things. Well, they could, they could go with a little bit less money. We need more money for this project or this project. You know, it's not a politician, but I have a funny feeling I might be onto something. But let me know down in the comments what you think about all this. So thanks everybody for watching the video. As earlier, smash the like button, comment on this, let me know what you think, and subscribe to the channel. We just crossed 300 subscribers on our way to 400. Let me what you think. I got an idea for another video, and it's actually you who commented on my conference realignment video gave me one. If I got enough time today, because I got to run back to Tennessee, run to Memphis actually, to drop this trailer, and then I get to go home. Since I'm right now just outside of Tallahassee, Florida, I ran out of hours on my 14 hours of my day because, well, <laughs> um, yeah, go to the truck, hear the thing about this, if you haven't figured it out yet, folks, I'm a truck driver who's a fanatical college football fan, um, I was on my way out of here, I was probably spending the night in Georgia somewhere, I got a great little spot in Georgia off I-10 I spent the night at. But, I had to wait in Jacksonville to get a load. And for those of you who don't know about truck driving, you have 14 hour day, 11 of it driving. Once you spend more than 3 hours, is once you start driving, I should say. Once you start doing anything, your pre-trip or anything, your 14 hour clock starts. No matter how long you've driven, unless you've driven more than 11 hours and you, 11 hours and you try to do more than that, then you have to shut down. But once that clock starts, 14 hour later, your day ends. You could be sitting and waiting for eight hours. That means you've got six hours of drive time and on-duty time left before your 14-hour clock stops. So because I did my inspection and I had to wait in Jacksonville for about three and a half hours, actually almost four hours for my next load, it ate into my drive time. Then I had to go wait an hour to get fuel at a lovely truck stop in uh, Lee, Florida, I believe. And um, out of loves and well, a few pumps were out of service because the computers went out. So it took 45 minutes to get fuel. Normally it takes 10 to 15. Yeah, it made the day a little longer. So I didn't get nowhere near as good. So hopefully I'll have enough time to get home today. So but I've been rambling on long enough. This is about HBCUs. It's not really about me. Educate me on this one. Anything on, thoughts on there? Like under being underfunded is nobody can dispute that fact. But let me know down in the comments. So thanks everybody for watching the video and listening to me being long winded and complaining. Thanks everybody. Hope everybody is having will have a great Friday, and please be good to each other.